um, this webinar. Um, my name is Lydia, second name Barbanova, and um, I'm going to be with you for the next um, hour and a half, um, around 60 minutes presentation, um, and then we will have um, 30 minutes for discussion, for your questions, for your comments, and also for your wonderful examples in the field of uh, music uh, business uh, worldwide. We're going to talk today about sustainability and international expansion of a music venture. Um, I myself, I'm an economist, um, but I'm also a pianist. Um, I um, never graduated music, but I love music. I go to music events. I come from a family of musicians as well as passionate educators. Um, and I've devoted my time to help uh, people like you worldwide um, to find more money, more audiences, to understand better culture policies, to be able to uh, make much better plans um, and to also to start up um, their own music ventures. So today we're going, and by the way, these are my two books. Um, International Entrepreneurship in the Arts uh, was published by Rockledge um, in 2016 and uh, partially of what I'm going to say is based on the book. You can find it online. And also my previous book, uh, Strategic Management in the Arts, uh, is also uh, published by Rockledge in 2012. Both books contain a lot of theoretical uh, discourses as well as practical examples about how um, arts and culture ventures and organizations um, are making it nowadays, um, and the, the, the examples come from uh, all over the world. Um, today we're going to talk about um, seven important angles. Um, I'll start by um, introducing you the concept of sustainability in uh, the arts and culture, because there are a variety of ways in which we interpret it. Um, then we're going to talk about environmental um, sustainability, financial sustainability. I'll introduce you to um, the um, innovation and uh, entrepreneurship in the arts uh, and music. What does it mean? What are the basic theoretical concepts? And I'm going to give you also uh, plenty of examples. Uh, we're going to talk about the key stages um, in the entrepreneurial process and so very little about the business modeling. We'll touch upon this issue because uh, financial sustainability in the arts uh, depends uh, very much on understanding the whole entrepreneurial process. And um, we'll touch upon the international expansion um, of arts or music venture, which again is based on, on my latest book and the research which I did um, in many countries. Um, and finally, I'll introduce you to some uh, major trends uh, in the music business, uh, which are based also on, on my experience working with uh, startup companies as well as um, organizations in, in many fields, including also um, arts and culture. Um, I live in Montreal, I also live in Sofia, um, and I have three pianos, uh, one of them in, in, in Sofia and two of them in Montreal. Um, I love music, I go to music events, and a lot of what I'm going to um, share with you today is based on my um, profound experience in over 55 countries worldwide, um, and also my passion for music, as well as um, a lot of reading and a lot of research which um, I've, I've done um, in this area. Finally, we're going to uh, finish with some tips for, for, from music entrepreneurs. Um, if we have time, I'll share with you something uh, which I find very, very useful and important for those of you who would like to uh, start and expand um, a music venture abroad. Let's start with the concept of sustainability for, for a few minutes, um, because um, there are a lot of uh, theoretical discourses and, and writings on the field, and also music organizations are using more and more this concept to um, really implement new programs uh, and new strategies. Uh, by definition, which is the most, uh, most uh, world-spread definition of uh, UNESCO, um, is that sustainability means meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to uh, meet their own needs. Um, usually when we talk about sustainability in a variety of levels, uh, we mean three main aspects. Um, the most um, kind of um, well-known is that this is a system that can run effectively without further input from outside because it uses in no resources. We also use the word as uh, a care about the environment, about the issues of, of, of green planet, the global warming, which I'm going to also say a few words how this is connected with um, arts and culture. And then the financial sustainability, which will take majority of our talk today, uh, which is the business modeling, generating money for um, in a long term uh, on a reliable basis. I found very uh, recently a, a, a concept that is called environmental morality, which is actually the moral obligation to not spend uh, more than we have, which, which uh, coincides with the first um, definition. Um, those of you who work much more in the field of uh, sustainability, you know very well that um, in the last over 10 years, we talk about the so-called four pillars model of sustainability, where we put culture 
as one of the four or the four pillars, together with the environmental responsibility, together with the economic health um, and the social um, equality. We also include cultural vitality, the well-being, creativity, diversity, innovation is a very, very important angle um, to really um, uh, develop sustainability in a certain city um, or a certain region or country. Um, the environmental sustainability, and by the way, these uh, three images um, are coming from, um, from the campus in 2007 in, in, in May, in New Delhi, where I was invited to teach for uh, Art in South Asia, um, a wonderful gathering of uh, fellows uh, from the region. And I found this uh, very nice, um, very nice images on the on the trees in the garden, which uh, which I, I really adore and wanted to share it with with you. Um, the environmental sustainability, usually when when we talk about it, we mean um, nine key issues. And um, the, this slide and the next one um, are based on uh, on my research, which I did with uh, David O'Brien Center for Sustainable Development here in Montreal uh, several years ago. Uh, we were asking cultural organizations the question, how do you understand sustainability and, and, and how do you include it in your programming? And we found out that these are nine uh, key issues um, when managing art organizations related to sustainability. What we mean is, first of all, environmentally friendly design of buildings. Um, then we mean energy efficient managing of venues and, and office spaces. Um, the third angle, what, what we use in practice uh, when we tackle sustainability is the um, energy efficiency in the creative production process, uh, which, uh, which combines lighting, stage equipment, properties, and so on. Uh, we also have in mind the environmental issues when attracting large audiences to, uh, to live events. And I'll give you uh, two examples from Canada, how, um, how very prominent uh, cultural organizations in the field of music um, are, are actually doing it. Um, the, first, the, the fifth angle of uh, sustainability is um, the environmental concern. Um, during, especially during uh, touring and during mobility. Um, we also um, include um, uh, sustainability in the expression sustainable tourism, uh, where we mean much more the preservation of cultural heritage sites, uh, which sometimes might be polluted and might be, might be destroyed by um, the over tourism. So caring about that um, is also an important angle. Um, the seventh aspect is uh, gaining visibility, how we actually make sure that our efforts are heard um, and uh, media talk about us and, uh, and we, we have a large uh, PR campaigns when, when we do something related with sustainability. And the last two are also very important. One um, aspect is um, the sustainable communities, um, the social impact uh, on uh, sustainability. And I'll give you again examples. And the economic uh, impact, um, what does it mean to really put in place sustainable programs uh, that um, are uh, going to be for a, for a long term? Um, two examples, uh, one of them is um, uh, the very well-known um, organization for you, I'm sure, um, the International Jazz Festival in, in Montreal. Um, some fact that um, is the largest jazz festival in the world. Uh, 2017, uh, we had over 800 um, events, performances. Um, two thirds of them were free outdoor, 600 traditional activities, uh, 2.5 million visitors every year, um, a lot of journalists, a lot of outdoor uh, stages, 10 free outdoor stages and uh, 15 concert halls. So we have um, events outside and also um, indoor. Um, what, what few people know is that uh, Montreal International Jazz Festival um, has a very uh, prominent sustainability um, strategy and program in the management and operations. Um, they recuperate approximately 30 tons of waste um, in cooperation with, with the consortium Ecologic. And um, they are uh, the Carbon Neutral Festival, one of the first events in North America to uh, have received such kind of uh, certification. Um, they also use stage equipment with energy efficiency standard, um, and they use organic cleaning products in, in the dining areas around, around the festival. Um, also, they print um, all the promotional materials on, on recycled paper. Um, to add to that, um, the, um, the Jazz Festival harvests uh, rainwater from, from plants, from water plants. Um, in the festival venue, they do composting and uh, they offer ecological clothing and accessories um, for, the, for sale in, in all their boutiques. Um, a very important angle is their community uh, responsibility because um, they support local artists, uh, talents to uh, very many free outdoor programs and they have a wonderful volunteering program for for students and, and for young people um, during, um, during the festival. A very important, um, um, interesting uh, example of uh, how um, do we use uh, sustainability, environmental sustainability in, in our music events 
um, is uh, Juno Awards, um, the, the most prestigious uh, music awards in, in Canada. Um, and they have commitment to events um, uh, in the field of sustainability since uh, 2008. Um, what, do they, what they do is uh, they select reusable or compost, comp compostable service uh, where for all caterings and, and craft areas. Uh, they also focus on, on use of energy conserved uh, LED technology and, and video projection. Um, they use um, digital um, signs, uh, keeping um, a lot of banner materials out of landfill. Um, and for the uh, people who come to the festival, you can open uh, Juno Awards um, website to see that they even warn each one of us as audiences uh, when we go to Juno Awards um, to be careful um, at the event, to be careful about disposal of uh, waste, um, uh, to, to use the recyclables in appropriate uh, areas, also to use reusable mug, um, to also get to know the local culture and, and buy uh, locally produced products, uh, which is also an important angle of sustainability. Um, when we travel to uh, Juno Awards, um, they also remind us to book the travel via the most direct route to reduce the travel related emission and also um, to travel to and from Juno Week events by foot, by bike, uh, by public transit to, um, to decrease um, the, um, the gas emission from the cars. In the hotels, um, they also remind us to, uh, be, um, to be careful about turning the lights, TVs, air conditioners when we go out and also to be careful about um, using the towels and the linen. Um, so I find this very important because on one hand, uh, Juno uh, um, management is very careful about uh, sustainability from their side, but on another hand, um, they also remind us as visitors to, um, to really also be careful about um, sustainability issues when, when uh, we talk about, um, about um, uh, the problems of, of environment and, um, and uh, pollution. Um, the third, as I said, part of our discussion today is going to be much more on, on financial uh, sustainability. Um, I'll put stress on uh, what is innovation, because we spoke so much about innovation, and I'm going to give you examples from the, from the music world um, about very interesting, and some of them very funny, uh, but um, innovative examples of, of connecting music with, um, with uh, other products which we use much more often. Um, I'll, I'll talk briefly about the entrepreneurial process um, in the arts. What does it mean? Uh, where the, the important angle is? Um, and then we're going to look at uh, the um, um, entrepreneurial process and, uh, and the business planning together. Um, I like this, uh, this, um, uh, this uh, expression, no music, no life, because um, it's very clear for uh, most of us that work in uh, arts, culture and music, uh, that we do it because we love it. Um, of course, there are other motivations for the entrepreneurs to, um, um, to do what they do, but in the arts and culture, the love and the passion um, is something that leads uh, most of us to really stay um, in the field together with, of course, uh, trying to make it, trying to be sustainable financially, um, making or not making profit, but at least uh, trying to be sustainable. Um, innovation, uh, by definition, implies always newness, and it's newness in the product in the service, in the resources, in the process. It could be also in the more efficient way by which uh, we do things. Could be in the new business model, in, in new marketing model. So innovation is not necessarily only a technical term. Um, as Peter Drucker rightly says uh, many years ago uh, when he wrote his book on innovation in the mid of 80s of the last century, he said innovation is an economic or social rather than technical term. And this is a very specific tool uh, for entrepreneurs. Um, creative destruction is also a term which uh, we have heard from Joseph Schumpeter and um, it's repeated also in many resources on innovation because it leads us to the idea that once when a new product or service appear on the market then, then it destroys in a way uh, the previous way by which we have, we, have, we have approached it. It's very important to also understand that innovation uh, creates new and, uh, and different values for the, for the customers and the clients. Um, in my book, um, I um, ended up with, uh, with the several types of innovations after um, uh, reading a lot of sources and then also talking to practitioners and experts on, on innovation in the arts. Um, there are business um, innovations and social innovations, so I'm going to give you um, some examples about both. Uh, the difference is that social innovations always try to look at um, solving a social problem, helping communities. Business innovations usually uh, lead us to, um, to um, uh, making a business model that uh, is sustainable with the time. And in, in the field of music and, and arts, um, they are very much connected. So you're going to see through the examples that it's uh, never either or uh, because they, they both are very connected. 
Um, we also have breakthrough and incremental innovations. One of them are much more, uh, much more um, evolutionary. They lead us to a new product or service. Incremental innovations are gradually um, gradual developments of a product or a service, um, and they need much less R&D. Um, they are also um, much less risky uh, in comparison with, with breakthrough innovations. Uh, process and product innovations also mentioned in, in many um, theoretical resources. Um, some uh, process innovations always uh, bring us to those spots in the system which actually doesn't work very well and they need improvement, which is uh, one of the sources of, of, of an innovation. And product innovations could be also innovations in the services or in the, in the creative programming when we talk um, about the arts. Um, let's look at two examples. Um, one of them is, um, is an example, uh, uh, very interesting, how we can uh, combine uh, music with, uh, with milkshaking. Um, and the company um, Rock Music Milkshake Mixer is the name of the project. It's going to be presented in the Big Band uh, Fair in 2018 um, in UK. Let's watch a short video because I think it explains, um, just one minute, it explains by itself uh, what is this uh, very uh, funny, interesting and, um, and uh, innovative uh, product. Hi guys, the Blowfish here, the world's only heavy metal marine biologist. And this is the Rock Music Milkshake Mixer. This fantastic piece of kit can make you a cracking drink while banging out some sweet tunes at the same time. Thanks to the science of somatics, this thing mixes with sound waves. Basically, underneath here, we have a massive speaker. And on that speaker, we put some good old-fashioned milkshake powder. And of course, the secret ingredient, a bit of milk. Then we slam through some tunes, and what we get is a tasty drink ready for any thirsty mosher. a very um, interesting way how uh, music can be combined with uh, milkshaking and um, this can inspire kids to be much more curious about uh, science, technology, engineering, um, uh, engineering and, and mathematics. Um, another interesting example comes from uh, South Korea. This is um, um, uh, announced to be um, the simplest music creation app for dreamers um, and this is how uh, the um, inventors would like to democratize music because you can use the Hamon device even if you um, really um, don't know how to compose, because you can hum on and you can make very cool music uh, simply by uh, humming. Again, let's watch a uh, one minute uh, video. <laughs> Imitone allows you to bring your voice into any music software as if you're playing the notes on a keyboard. You open my software, Imitone. Then you open whatever music program you like, like GarageBand. And then, immediately, without any setup, you'll be able to control the instruments in GarageBand by singing into your microphone. I made this software because I want total musical beginners to be able to engage with the world of music software sooner. It's like a walled garden. You need to you need to be able to play a keyboard or punch the notes in in order to be able to enter that garden. I want to kick a hole in the wall. So uh, we see from this um, example, um, oh, I have to turn the microphone when I play a video. Thank you so much. Um, you see from this example that, um, that um, uh, and at the end of the uh, session, we're going to also look at some other trends in, um, in the music business worldwide and music industry. But one of them is definitely uh, the, uh, the need for uh, democratizing music and, and making sure that uh, people are very much involved in it. Um, in my book, um, I came up with a definition about uh, entrepreneurship because, as we said, um, innovation is a very important, uh, very important tool for uh, entrepreneurs. Um, and um, the definition uh, comes from um, from my online survey as well as again talking with um, a lot of um, 
real uh, entrepreneurs in different areas and also experts in the field. So I came up with this definition that entrepreneurship um, in the arts utilizes creative and innovative artistic ideas, uh, transforming them into a sustainable business model uh, by seeking and organizing uh, resources that uh, usually are beyond the disposal of the entrepreneur and, um, and then implementing um, diverse innovative approaches while undertaking certain amount of risk. And I have to um, specify that the risk in, in um, art, arts and culture is not only um, financial one, but also it's a risk related with the reputation. Um, a very important angle is also that entrepreneurs um, usually see what other people don't see. Um, they, this is why um, um, I mentioned that these are resources that are beyond their disposal. Um, many people have shared with me that um, entrepreneurs in the arts have to have strong passion for the arts to be able to uh, start up um, a new business, also to have leadership abilities because eventually um, the entrepreneurial venture grows um, and, and, and they have to hire people and they have to be managers. And then they have to also have strategic vision because majority of uh, great um, entrepreneurial examples um, worldwide, uh, they show that uh, strategy is very important. How do we see our music venture in the next uh, not only five, but 10, 15, uh, 20 years from now? So uh, visionary people are the ones who are much better um, entrepreneurs. It's also they have to understand the um, context in which um, arts uh, and culture operate nowadays because um, entrepreneurship and, and strategy are very connected and strategy is exactly about uh, looking much more beyond the, um, the um, um, management of a, of a specific enterprise. Um, there are several uh, types of entrepreneurs, again, uh, as a result of this research. Uh, business entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs, I'm going to again give you um, examples. And um, artpreneurs, which is, um, which is um, another, which is another uh, term which we use nowadays. Um, which is much more about people that uh, do their art, but also uh, they are uh, doing everything else. Uh, we call them also musicpreneurs. Um, entrepreneurs or organizational um, entrepreneurs are the ones that work in already established organization, but they have the ability to uh, innovate. They have very brilliant ideas and, um, and also they, they, they prefer the, the stable environment in an organization. Uh, this term we use very, very uh, rarely in the arts, but, um, no, but in the last few years it's coming more and more. Uh, creative entrepreneurs is a bit broader term, so it covers those entrepreneurs that are not necessarily in arts, culture, music and creative industries, uh, but um, they can be in any other profession, any other area where people use uh, creativity. Um, and finally, international entrepreneurs, um, by the end of uh, the session I'll update you a little bit about um, what are the, uh, the angles of international entrepreneurship nowadays? Uh, social entrepreneurship is, is different than business entrepreneurship because social entrepreneurs usually look um, to create and sustain social values to help communities. They look at a business model that um, is breaking even but not necessarily making profit because there is a limited distribution of profit in the, in the social entrepreneurial examples. Um, they also use volunteering. Um, majority of, of social entrepreneurial examples need collaboration. Uh, participatory and collaborative nature, nature is very important angle because they involve um, different stakeholders from, uh, from different from the private, public and, and not for profit sector. Uh, this is why um, social entrepreneurship can be initi initiated in a in different type of, of organization is not necessarily initiated only in a, in a not for profit organization. Uh, two examples, uh, one of them is uh, Vinci reinventing headphones because um, these are smart headphones using artificial intelligence founded in 2014 by, uh, by David and Max and they, they raised initially over uh, a million dollars on Kickstarters and Indigo to start, to start the project. Now the company works um, with, um, with very talented engineers and they're located in, in four uh, cities across the world. Um, the, the, smart, um, the smart headphones can, um, um, can uh, be used also for um, uh, playing songs when you run, to check your steps, um, to, to, to try to check your health, to make phone calls, to get alert, to stream songs um, and for many other um, areas. Um, also um, another example, um, another example is coming from, um, from um, um, California. This is called Oric Audio. We're going to also watch um, a very short video to see how this company works. Uh, but this invention um, is uh, sustainable speakers uh, that um, they believe very much that um, they're going, they, they have therapeutic um, um, also element 
and they can increase the civic engagement, diplomacy, peace um, in the public domain. Um, so these are foldable uh, speakers that are made of, um, out of uh, recycled materials, for example, pizza boxes and, and old phone boxes and others. Um, so um, the company um, again does a lot of interesting, interesting things. Let's um, let's watch um, a short video. Boring is, well, it's boring. Let's shake things up. Let's dare to be different. Actually, let's aim to be different and then scream it from the rooftop. This is Org Audio. We march to the beat of our own drum and love the fact that we look, act, and aren't like those other guys. And not only do we drink the Kool-Aid, we make the Kool-Aid. We package it and include a straw for easy consumption. We're sure you'll like the flavor because we combine creativity with innovation and technology to bring you things you've never seen before. Awesome things. Of course we think outside the box, but we also think inside the box and about the box itself. And if we're still not happy, we scrap the whole thing and go ahead and make our own. Our standards for our work and quality and ultimately your success and happiness are, well, higher, keep going, even higher. That's about right. Our team of creative, dedicated, service-oriented go-getters play hard and work even harder. We love what we do and we think it shows. We make awesome happen. This is Origadio. As you heard from the video, very important point, um, entrepreneurs um, are the one that um, are very passionate of what they're doing. Um, and um, also they think differently. They think not within the box, but outside of the box and even without a box, uh, which is actually the new um, concept of, of entrepreneurship. Uh, and because they think differently, uh, now we're going to see how important it is to, um, to sense and, and recognize an opportunity from the external world. Uh, so let's look at the, in, in not more than five, six minutes, let's look at the key stages in the, in the entrepreneurial process and what do we call business modeling. And I'm going to give you only a few examples um, of business models, but um, you can read in the books, in my book and also in other theoretical uh, resources further. Um, the entrepreneurial uh, process in the arts usually starts with initial preparation of a um, variety of questions related to our reason to do that, motivation, um, and then uh, generation of business ideas. Then we pass through the filtering of these innovative ideas, which I'm going to say a few words, uh, protecting the idea to a variety of uh, intellectual property rights, uh, looking at partnership options, uh, because majority of uh, great entrepreneurial uh, and innovative examples, um, they really race in collaboration with other organizations. Um, and then considering the overall strategic framework in which we operate, uh, and writing and, and writing the business plan where we look for partnership, we look for investment, um, and we look also to understand um, how to to make the business venture in the future. Uh, the filtering of the innovative ideas is a very important process so that we can uh, we can choose among uh, the many ideas what we have, one of them which can, we can transform into a, into a new uh, business venture which has a social as well as um, economic uh, economic values. Um, and usually this filtering once when we work with, with real startups in, in, in business and in, in the music and, and arts, um, we're looking at compatibility between um, the idea and the entrepreneur. Uh, we're looking at the, the relevance to the, to the targeted country if we are going um, to expand abroad, the permissibility of the idea, to what extent we really need any legal uh, protection um, and legal issues to solve. Um, the market and, and the economic tests are very important because market test gives us usually um, a chance um, if the innovative idea is going to be accepted well and how. And then the economic test um, is um, giving us um, the, um, the much, more, um, uh, much more precise parameters about the financial sustainability, the profitability of this idea and the cost benefit analysis. Um, usually the fourth and the fifth level of this filtering process uh, in practice comes for, for several months and it's not just for a few days because a very good market and economic test um, needs time to really be elaborated. And then we're looking at the level of risk, um, to what extent um, really this new idea is, is very risky financial wise and also in terms of uh, reputation. If um, the idea passes through this level then, um, then, then we set up adventure. This is kind of more theoretical angle by which we look at the filtering process. Um, one important part of, of the entrepreneurial process um, is the business model. And I gave you three uh, different definitions, but they, 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 they very much uh, put stress on, on the fact that 
a business model is usually a plan that we implement to generate revenue to make a profit uh, from the operations and any successful business model that is created uh, needs um, uh, to really um, um, uh, sustain and then also create a value uh, for the partners uh, that are involved in this process. Um, there is there is a lot of literature written on the on the business modeling, and um, I really advise those of you for whom this um, term is pretty new to uh, have a look uh, further. Um, very important focus in any business model and any business plan um, are two. One of them is um, the break-even point um, in the future when uh, the um, uh, the new venture is going to uh, become um, sustainable financially, and from then on making profit. And then the revenue projection: how we see the development of the revenues increase of the revenues um, in the next um, in the next uh, one to three years. Uh, usually in practice, we do the, the, the business uh, planning for up to three years because um, after that it's very difficult to extrapolate and to really um, see what is going to happen in practice. A very important point which, um, which few people in the arts understand that uh, business planning is not just a document, it's something which is a process, but it helps us to clarify where do we want to go how we are seeing our new um, music venture um, and, and how to get there, what might be the steps, what has to be the steps to, um, to get there, both from the concept part of it um, uh, or the creative part of it and also the financial part of it. There are a lot of online business models. Um, I'm sure that um, uh, you know some of them very well. The freemium model, which uh, is used by many um, online um, websites, where we have um, we have uh, the basic service free, and then the more uh, services we we want, and the more we pay. Affiliated models, which is a connection link campaign between um, two and more websites, where they lead the traffic from one to another, and uh, and they get paid for that. Membership subscription, where we offer to um, to um, um, our subscribers a variety of services, which could be on annual or uh, or uh, weekly uh, or monthly base. Advertising model, the dynamic pricing model, which is like various uh, prices based on the on the market principles. Pay what you can or pay what you want model, which uh, allows users um, um, to uh, to pay um, for the service which we offer as much as they want, or the product or the new music album. Uh, online stores, um, especially for fine arts, uh, bite and hook model, where we first bite, we try to grab the attention of our um, uh, online users and then we hook them and then we, we, we uh, continue offering them uh, a variety of services. And again, these are only some of the, of the possible uh, models which uh, we use much more nowadays online because majority of the new um, music and art ventures, uh, they, have, they have an online presence together with uh, being online. We also have a lot of uh, partnership business models uh, because this is how uh, the crossover innovations uh, comes as a result of connections between um, um, organizations in, in culture and creative industries, between them and other sectors. Um, here we have um, as partnership business models, um, artistic collectives, um, strategic alliances could be um, um, non-equity or equity strategic alliances, creative clusters, which I'm sure also that you have heard this um, expression as well, and a um, variety of online portals and, and, and collaborative tools. Uh, again, we're not going to pass through them, but just for your understanding. And I'm going to give you two examples um, of such kind of uh, collaboration that brings um, inspiration, uh, innovation, as well as um, a new business model and, and, and fulfills this entrepreneurial process. Um, one of them is from California, the Bottle Rock Napa Valley. This is a unique music festival that brings together musicians, but also celebrity chefs uh, in, in a very interesting setting. Uh, they had um, in 2007 culinary stage uh, portion that includes food industry stars, um, and um, and um, it's it's a very interesting fusion between uh, industry leaders in the food beverage sector um, as well as music. Um, another example uh, also is very interesting: a connection between Warner Music in Nashville and, and Southwest Airlines. Um, they offer passengers on the on the plane, which is a, a pretty interesting innovation. Um, on their holidays in the cabin, a, a very unconventional way to pass their time when they fly, um, because um, there is a small band which performs in the in the plane, and of course we understand all the limitations because it's very tight space and, and there is lack of electronic resources, so musicians are required to perform uh, with very minimal equipment, uh, but um, the feedback shows that um, passengers like really very much this, um, this new form of um, of entertainment, which is again a connection, it's a, it's kind of a um, alliance between um, two um, two different companies. 
Um, why, start why startup companies in, in the arts can, can really fail? Um, in my research, um, I found out um, several important reasons uh, that one of them is the lack of sensitivity, cultural sensitivity or music sensitivity in, in um, uh, music uh, preneurs or, or art preneurs. Um, they don't have intuition for talent. The choice of a wrong partner could be also a problem in, in, um, in, in um, startups um, when we start very nicely, very happy, but then uh, but then after some time, uh, the two or several people who start the venture, they, um, they uh, cannot really maintain it. Uh, the wrong uh, use of the first revenues, which we, we call cash flow problem, uh, the delegation problem or inability of, um, of music managers to, to lead the business once when it starts growing. Uh, not considering the global market, because um, if they concentrate only on their country, uh, then um, the expansion uh, process might be very limited. This is why um, I decided to uh, write this book, because I travel the world. Um, um, I, um, I see that a lot of um, uh, artpreneurs and, and cultural entrepreneurs, musicpreneurs, um, they look at their country, they're very prominent in their region, but their expansion abroad um, sometimes um, has a limited capacity. Um, so let's, um, in not more than um, um, seven, eight, up to ten minutes, um, look at the international expansion of art um, and music venture, which um, again is based uh, primarily on, on my latest book. Um, and then finally, we're going to look at some trends um, in the music business globally. Uh, and then we're going to open um, um, the online space um, for your questions and comments. Um, how I understand international entrepreneurship in the arts is in eight different aspects. It could be domestic inception uh, of an art venture and then followed by international expansion. Could be um, a music venture that starts beyond the national borders in very early stages of, of its inception. Could be because uh, we combine different resources that come from different countries. Um, or we start with a multinational team, uh, the, the, the new art venture that, that is run by, by people from different countries. Um, or um, we uh, get finances uh, from, uh, from international resources. Or maybe because we create an art product or creative programming with international dimension. So the result shows that um, in one or another way, um, we can understand the term international uh, entrepre entrepreneurship um, in a way that we, we would like to expand um, our venture uh, the national borders, be it as offices, presence in other countries, partners in other countries, revenues from other countries, or, or financing from other countries, or in any other way. Um, why um, people in the in the arts uh, business and, and music business would like uh, international expansion? Um, many of the people with whom I spoke um, mentioned the motivation and the traits of the entrepreneur as a very important factor. In other words, if we travel and if we have this this ability, this nomadic spirit of traveling, then um, uh, there is very high probability that we're going to look beyond the national borders. The revenue increase, the use of economy of scale, access to unique resources, access to new location, constant innovation because organizations in 21st century who do not innovate, they uh, might die very easily, attracting local talents and, and maybe also government initiatives in the country which supports much more um, um, entrepreneurship in the field of music and arts. Uh, and again, in the book, you can read much uh, more reasons um, about the research. Uh, this um, this uh, drawing shows you how from the domestic inception of an art enterprise, uh, we go to, to international expansion. Um, and there are several important points uh, to mention here, together with um, recognizing an opportunity, looking at innovation, uh, performing a research. Um, it's very important to choose an international entry model uh, and to also to, uh, to um, be able to do a market research in the targeting country um, and to find a, a very good partner. Um, in terms of the international entry models, um, uh, there are a variety of options uh, in the field of music. We don't use all, all of them, uh, but if you look at this uh, graduation from the gradual, uh, gradual increase from the very simple um, entry models where we need low level of risk uh, and control, and this is much more for startup ventures, um, to very big and large corporations and organizations where the, the risk is, is very high and the control is very high. Um, so um, we could mention the direct exporting through foreign agents or through uh, distributors, the licensing, uh, franchising, a uh, variety of collaborative models from consortium, co-productions, network, um, artistic residences, festivals and others, touring and mobility um, that are much on the lower level. On the upper level of this pyramid um, are those um, international entry models that require a lot of finances and they require also 
a very, very long term uh, strategic uh, partnership. This could be um, strategic alliances, um, international integration, mergers, acquisitions, also greenfield investments, uh, branch offices that we open um, in our countries. Um, an interesting example is Enhau Hotel that focused on, on music. Um, they started only with uh, Germany, but then they expanded in Milan, Rotterdam, London. Um, interesting thing about this hotel is that it combines um, the hotel business with music. For example, offering guitars and keyboards rooms as a room service, uh, making also possible to have music events, um, to have live sessions um, in a silent rehearsal room, to um, to record a new album, and this is a great hotel for uh, for musicians that uh, travel. Also on the on the uh, on the on one of the floors they have a music sound floor. Um, it's a very unique uh, hotel chain uh, in Europe. Uh, and also a dynamic space with a new design where a variety of, of different uh, fine arts and, and uh, objects are also uh, presented. Um, you can look on, on YouTube, there are also uh, plenty of videos about uh, giving an image about um, and how to tell. A few words about opportunities, trends, um, and also about um, some challenges uh, in international um, entrepreneurship. Um, the opportunities and trends today are connected with the Generation Z, which is a generation born in the year 2000, which is already very, very prominent in the, in the world global market, reflecting the issues of global concern in many of, of the new startup ventures. Uh, a lot of use of the digital technologies, which I'm going to also say a few words in the last 10 minutes of our session. Use of the crowd financing platforms, which are popping up uh, more and more, more as, a, as a very important way how we can how we can um, uh, grasp the attention and the money of, uh, of many people online, uh, and the crossover innovations and effects, which um, I also uh, mentioned a little bit about. There are challenges in the, in the international entrepreneurship. Um, some of them are related with the very protective uh, behavior of, of musicpreneurs, because they don't want to share, and um, they, they're very much hands-on when they start the business. Um, in those cases where artistic content and music content is very much embedded in the local settings, then it's very much very difficult uh, to uh, to expand the venture abroad. Um, not knowing the local language, uh, because um, many countries worldwide do not really use a lot English, um, um, German, French, Spanish, uh, Italian, and, and more popular languages. I work with uh, with um, organizations in Central Asia a lot. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Tajikistan, and also on the Caucasus, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia. Um, and I see that language problem for, um, for partnership there in these countries is, is sometimes very difficult. Um, the differences in the cultural norms and traditions between the countries, and also lack of information about logistics of international expansion. In the last um, uh, 10 minutes, we're going to look at the major trends um, in the music industry um, in, the, in, in the last year and, and then this year. Um, I like what I what I uh, read in the event read um, that 2017 has the potential to be one of the most transformative years uh, for the music um, in decades. Um, the first trend is related uh, with the management and the format. Um, what I, what we see happening is the shift from the record labels to diverse independent formats in the music business, and then new music formats um, that take um, make payments to artists accurate and very quick. And the rise of the music entrepreneurs, as I mentioned, this term from the from the beginning of our session today. Um, also, um, uh, in the field of distribution, um, if you look at the screen, the pre-internet model and the present model are very different, and um, the, the distribution is very much changed nowadays. Um, reaching the customer much faster, but also uh, much more difficult, becoming to control the royalties um, and the flow of money. Uh, because in the past it was much more uh, much more hierarchical model where the artist is signing contract with the record label and then the record label is doing the touring promotion distribution and so on. And now the artist or writer him, him or herself um, is the one that that is editing. Uh, in the field of distribution as well, um, there is diversion between the terrestrial radio and the and the streaming of the music. So some experts say that maybe radio will slowly die. Unlimited streaming available almost everywhere. Um, we have touring and festivals, which is mentioned by many experts online, um, that will become much more vital. And a lot of partnership strategies uh, between uh, different venues, uh, especially in the field of protecting their rights. Um, and I read um, a very interesting example in the Music Venue Trust in UK about that. Uh, the third angle of, of the major trends um, is um, in the field of audience um, involvement. Um, that many music events are becoming very experimental, very immersive, 
Um, audiences nowadays are looking to engage in live music events. Um, they don't want to escape, but they want escape from reality to go to an event, but they want to go and to be engaged in music. Um, also using music for building community, for sharing social or other causes. Um, and uh, curating festivals together with the audience. Uh, we have a lot of examples where where the the, um, the the festival managers prefer to look at what the audience likes, and then the curation of the whole programming um, is coming together. Um, also, making every audience member feeling like a very important person, like VIP, personalized marketing um, is happening also a lot in the field of uh, music business nowadays. Everyone can be an artist, composer, creator. We we saw one of the many examples about that the the Hamon uh, app. Um, that is that is democratizing the the, the music uh, the music making. Um, the fourth uh, major trends and and I'm going to share only two of the many examples um, I saw in the last months um, is in the field of technology. Uh, it's very clear that um, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, uh, the LED light uh, immersive experience, the big data, uh, machine leading algorithms, artificial intelligence um, are coming together. A lot of examples um, uh, on that, which um, is very clear that people working in the field of music and business um, should be able to see how they can use some of them, uh, what are the implications, what are the pros and cons um, of the new, new technologies. Uh, one example comes uh, from, uh, from Los Angeles. It's a virtual reality DG app uh, that allows you to perform in, in a virtual audience um, to watch your favorite DG from anywhere. We're going to also watch a short video for that. But it's also a platform for, for people that really love music because it enables them to view, to host, to socialize um, in shows worldwide um, in, any, in any time. Um, and uh, it's, it's very nice, uh, very nice um, uh, logo of this company, like a slogan that everyone in the, in the company is, is also um, involved in, in music and in musicians. You know, it uses obviously more of your body than you're doing just twisting knobs and pushing buttons. It also gives, you know, a chance for you to kind of express yourself with these motions. And we're designing these 3D interfaces with that in mind. I want to reach out to a track and like throw it in, or I want to like use a filter and like come to a climax and then my hands will be at the top and I'll be able to throw down a drop. Here are the tracks that I have loaded in and up here are the track decks. So. I'm just gonna load in a track over here and press play. Um, so now I have a track playing and I can adjust anything, you know, do some filter action. I use some effects for the drop. And I have the ability to VJ and DJ at the same time, so the drop for any key moments, I probably wanna change how I look, right? Technology is used in, in, in many um, areas of arts and culture. Um, I, um, I lead an online course with the University of British Columbia, which is on uh, um, cultural organizations, their strategies and, and their, their actions, their practices in the, in the digital realm. A very important um, because um, a lot of the new um, music ventures and, and new music innovations and entrepreneurial examples, uh, they connect in one way or another music with technology with the full understanding Again, going back to what Peter Drucker warned us many years ago, that um, innovation is not only technical, but also um, economic as well as, uh, as, well as social, social term. Uh, Ubercourt Germany um, is, uh, is a company that uses artificial intelligence, which is a based mobile music education platform, because um, you can learn guitar uh, with real-time feedback, uh, personal progress statistics. So Ubercourt listens to you uh, playing and then, and then adapts to your skill level. It's a very fun, uh, fun uh, um, app to, um, to really explore further. Um, the fifth um, major trend in the music industry, what I see, is related much more with sponsorship and, and with investment. Um, the fact that we need to encourage private sector's investment in the independent music much more. Uh, sponsorship focusing on, on building relations with, with specific artists, and, and, the, and one of the main examples was the Good Light and uh, Lady Gaga's uh, Dive Bar Tour in 2016. 
Uh, the music tourism, uh, which is coming a separate trend together with cultural tourism and creative tourism, and uh, Mute Festival in Montreal is one of the many examples that, um, that really uh, shows that. Uh, living in Montreal, I understand uh, very much how important um, arts and cultural tourism is because we have plenty of uh, festivals, um, especially in the summer, but not only, also in the winter. Uh, which attracts a lot of a lot of tourists. So music tourism is is another way of um, not only generating revenues for the music companies, but boosting the whole economic and um, social development in the region. And finally, um, music is part of daily life, and um, and this is what I I came up with this trend uh, by talking to the um, founder and um, and the uh, owner of the music. Um, a very interesting company that represents uh, music, uh, that represents Cuban musicians and musicians from countries which uh, love drinking Mojito um, worldwide. Um, she said to me that uh, music nowadays um, is, um, is um, a part of daily life. We have music for meditation, music for deep sleep, music for fitness, music for confidence, uh, birthday music. And um, Nelly Gomez also mentioned that uh, listening today uh, the music, uh, the, the people ask uh, the question, what is this music for, um, instead of who is actually performing the song. So you see the shift is, is actually uh, music as, as part of our daily life and not necessarily music that is um, locked within, within the buildings and within the concert halls. Finally, in the, in the last um, uh, five, six minutes, and we're going to um, open for discussion, uh, several tips from uh, great music uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, people who have made it, uh, people who um, start domestically very, very, very lean, and then and then at abroad. Uh, a very interesting person. This is uh, Lavar Berskanin from Belarus. Um, one of the cases uh, in my book where I explain um, how he did it, why he is considered to be the pioneer DJ um, in in Belarus, a country which um, is not very well present uh, still in the in the global arena. Um, he says, being an entrepreneur in the arts is always an individual story. So you shouldn't compare um, yourself with others. You have to just do it um, in a way you want and then, and then believe in it very strictly. Um, one of my preferred um, entrepreneurs, Derek Sievers, who many years ago um, established a company, CD Baby, and then he was able to, to sell it later on for, uh, for uh, a lot of million dollars. Um, and now he has um, new ventures um, worldwide, um, a very interesting personality. He says, don't follow just your passion. But follow your um, your uh, your guests to become so good that they can't ignore you. So his um, his viewpoint is that if you would like to if you want to love what you do, um, abandon the passion mindset and you have instead um, need to adopt the craftsman mindset. So you have to ask yourself the question: What can I offer to the world rather than what can the world offers to me? Um, and this shift is very important because um, passion is, is is the number one, but also you have to be very good craftsmen um, to be able to uh, to um, make it in the field of music. Um, other entrepreneurs, um, Mark Fraser uh, says, focus on the bottom line uh, and the network constantly because networking is something that brings us to all those uh, partnership models that become a very important source um, of a new um, entrepreneurial venture and a new innovation. Uh, knowing your competition is very important, but focusing on your product uh, and how this can be best delivered, and also following your path, your specific path, uh, not others, because we achieve success in different ways. So it's important to look what's happening outside, to look at competitors, but having your own story in mind uh, is something even more important. Um, other um, interesting tips from uh, um, um, from Lee Parson, uh, CEO of Ditto Music. Um, he says, listen to customers, not to your critics, because customers can give you a lot of feedback. And only investing your efforts into something um, you enjoy is very important. Um, the importance of think strategically um, is also uh, mentioned uh, by uh, Ben Michael and Lewis, uh, CEO of Press KTO. Uh, he says that being an entrepreneur is an owner that carries with, um, with it a major responsibility to create opportunities for others. An opportunity recognition is something which um, you, can, you can see in many books and articles in the field of, um, in the field of um, entrepreneurship, including also in, in arts and culture. Uh, he says, think, trust your instincts and, and go with, with what feels right and, and really make it happen. Um, and um, and um, I have the final one that is, um, curiosity is the most important skill uh, in the entrepreneurs um, because it doesn't matter what is the business uh, you are in, you have to constantly change your assumptions, constantly ask yourself questions, 
ask questions of your clients, your team, your partners, your customers, um, and to also ask yourself the question, because um, questioning your wins, your losses, um, and everything in between is very important. Um, so I'll finish with, with saying, um, keep your curiosity, um, never accept a no as an answer, um, and be very determined of what you want to do. Keep your vision, because many people um, fail um, in their first steps of being music printers just because um, they're looking at only at the practicalities, but not, not the big vision and, and not the future. So keep your, what you want to do and, um, and never give up. Um, and um, be very passionate, but also um, understand it, uh, learn it, uh, look at examples from, from the outside world. Uh, because we can we can be sustainable financially and we can expand and, and, and make the world uh, know about our, our creative idea uh, only by partnership, by a lot of efforts and also by, uh, by networking. I um, One of my treasuries in my life, I think the most important one is that I have um, friends uh, and uh, colleagues and uh, students, partners um, in, in over 55, maybe 60 countries uh, worldwide. Um, and majority of my, uh, my examples in my professional life uh, where I feel the most fulfilled and the most happy um, are coming because we are making it together. So the togetherness is something that matters. And I'll end by saying that if in the business world um, sustainability strategies are, and, and financial strategies are much more connected with competition, with us in the arts, um, they're much more connected with collaboration, with, uh, with partnership and with making it together. Uh, this is why in my, um, in my latest two books, uh, Strategic Entrepreneurship in the Arts and also International Entrepreneurship in the Arts, um, I uh, put stress on a lot of uh, partnership strategies between organizations in the arts, culture and creative industries, but also between them and the rest of the world, because in many cases the attention or the money or the financial support is not necessarily in the arts field, but it's in the other areas. So cross-connections. Um, are, are very important. This is what I mentioned as uh, crossover uh, innovation. So in this uh, limited time, and we made it in uh, 57 minutes, um, I wanted to update you on, uh, first of all, just, just as a final reminder, um, on um, um, the understanding of uh, what, what is sustainability from different angles. Um, we also spoke about the um, financial sustainability, the entrepreneurial process, and how is it relevant with the arts. And the fact that arts and culture organizations do um, social as well as business entrepreneurship, and for them it's not only about making money, but also uh, being passionate and, and loving what, uh, what they do. Um, we also touch upon uh, what is innovation, different types of innovations, and the fact that innovation is a tool for entrepreneurship. Um, and um, finally, we um, touched upon the issue of um, international expansion uh, going beyond the national borders, what are the factors, what are the challenges, what are the motivations um, and the barriers uh, for entrepreneurs to go global. Um, and I shared with you some of, some of the latest um, findings on, on where the, the music business is going, what are the trends um, in relation to um, uh, distribution, to the new models, new formats, as well as audience involvement and, uh, and use of technology. So thanks very much for uh, listening today um, and um, I hope we're going to have a very fruitful discussion. Um, I'm going to follow the, the main uh, chat box uh, if you have comments or questions in case uh, there are many or I cannot answer to all of them. Um, uh, you can find me always on my website, uh, which is like my name, um, and also um, you can find me via, via email. I'm also on LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to uh, connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, Facebook as well, only for those uh, of you who know me because Facebook is much more for my uh, for the, for the people and, and my friends whom, whom I know very well. Instagram, I'm also there. So let's connect and continue our um, collaborative, uh, um, collaborative uh, future projects. So um, thanks very much. And also please uh, use the chat box to share your examples because I strongly believe that this seminar is not only uh, I am talking, but also you share with everybody. And it's a great uh, platform, um, uh, thanks to the organizers um, and, uh, and the European support uh, for, for um, uh, bringing us um, together today. Uh, so please share your examples um, on the chat box um, about innovations and about uh, entrepreneurship in the field of uh, music from many countries. As you see, I try to share some examples and tips from diverse countries from uh, North America through Europe and, 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 other, and other places. Uh, because we're going much more global and, and knowing what's happening and um, learning from mistakes and also 
sharing our great stories and examples um, is something which enriches us uh, very much. So thank you very much for your attention. So I look forward for um, any questions or comments which uh, you might have. Thank you, Elena. Somebody says thank you in the chat. Please find me on uh, the social media. I'll be very happy to uh, continue the, the conversation with you. Ivan is saying thank you. I also thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vladimir. He says, great presentation. Thank you so much. And um, also, I give online coaching uh, for uh, startup entrepreneurs, also for people who would like to uh, change their career and they, they are looking for something new um, or somebody who is uh, maybe puzzled to what to do in the future. Um, I have coaching experience um, over 10 years with people from all over the world. Um, and by the way, very positive feedback um, that they succeed in, in, in what they do as a result of the coaching. I call my, co I call my coaching uh, one-shot coaching because um, I prefer to meet, um, to meet uh, the person once or twice or maximum three times and not like giving homeworks and having this uh, exhausting process of, of, uh, of looking at the goals, objectives and, and a long period of, of three up to six months. Um, I really prefer um, our gatherings and, and our interventions to be short, very quick, and like a one shot of a vodka, one shot of a very, um, very strong drink where we uh, energize ourselves and we look at uh, what the person wants to do and, and, and how to help him or her to uh, start up the business or to change a uh, professional career. Mariana, could we please please have the presentation sent to us? Great structure and valuable information. Thank you very much, Mariana. For those of you who would like the, the PDF format of the presentation, please contact me personally because it's copyrighted and uh, the publisher doesn't allow me to um, disseminate it in PDF format. But in a personal basis, um, those of you who write me via either my, again, my, uh, my website or uh, my email, um, I'll be more than happy to share it with you on a one-to-one on -one basis. Um, even if um, there is a danger that um, I'm going to uh, you know, send me many emails, I prefer this, um, this uh, way. All right, so Sonia and, um, and uh, others, please um, find me. And of course, I'm, I'm going to be happy to share it with you. And uh, thanks for your interest. Um, it was very, very difficult for me to choose what to, um, what to really share with you uh, because there is a lot uh, happening worldwide and uh, this is why I try to, again, structure the presentation in a way where uh, we look at some of the issues because for each one of those um, seven points, um, we need another webinar, um, for example, for the entrepreneurial process, the business modeling. When we work with startup companies, it's a long, long process. Um, so, um, so this is why it was just touching upon um, raising your curiosity uh, because different uh, countries have different understanding of what uh, entrepreneurship is. Uh, some of them are really afraid even of using the word entrepreneurship <laughs> because it, it sounds very commercial. Um, other countries are much more advanced in, um, in the entrepreneurial processes and there is also support from the government on different levels uh, for startup entrepreneurs. Um, so, work, working worldwide, um, I see that uh, we um, understand this issue in, in the field of um, theory as well as practices um, in a very different way in different countries. Okay, others, your examples, um, maybe your questions.
Okay, maybe we're going to wait another maybe five minutes and then um, if there are no questions, we're going to uh, close. And then again, please um, find me online and we can continue the conversation because uh, for some of you, um, what I said might be very new, for others may be much more well known. Uh, but this is why we are getting together online to be able to share um, various um, experiences from um, our uh, very creative life. Yeah, I got a lot of thanks. That's brilliant. Thank you. I would be happy that we connect with Sonia, Mariana, Isabel, um, and others, Ivan, Vladimir, to um, really see who is doing what um, and um, and to see how we could collaborate in the future. Because I don't have um, your profile, so please uh, contact me, and you know maybe we can uh, invent something new together. Yes, let's connect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wonderful. I, I, I feel your uh, beautiful spirit behind um, behind the words, which uh, makes me happy in this uh, pretty gray um, day in Montreal. Okay, so I give the last chance for questions, and if not, um, Let's um, say goodbye to each other. So one, one, two minutes. If somebody wants to um, add something, or to ask, or to comment, or to share an example, and then the next week um, is going to be um, the next webinar: How to sell tickets in one minute. So these are going to be new trends for audience development in, in classical music. Um, Ivan, any hints on how to approach a new market? Um, you mentioned not knowing the local language is a barrier, and I totally agree. Um, even my, my, my research shows that the best approach uh, for a new market is to find a great partner because then um, uh, a reliable partner um, uh, is going to be the one to translate for you, to bring you to local scenes, to, uh, um, to uh, contact other uh, important players in the, in the, in the business in the in specific country, to introduce you to uh, professional networks and circles. So um, this is uh, what I see is, is, is the best way. Instead of paying to a translator, which might cost you a lot of money, and also in terms of trust, um, a local partner, especially in, in countries which are not that popular in terms of languages or location, um, is, um, is something very important. Another way is to uh, take the risk um, and go there and explore, first of all, on yourself, on your own. But again, my experience shows that uh, it's much better um, to uh, much better to um, to have a partner and to arrange some some meetings and, and, and gatherings before you go, so that you don't lose your time. If you go for ten days and a visit or a week or a couple of days, um, then you have um, you have already scheduled meetings with uh, professionals and with people from the from the field. Uh, also, making your own research about the country is very important. Um, majority of the countries that are um, that are not English speaking. Um, do not really have very good presence online, like for example Kazakhstan or Tajikistan where I work or, uh, or Georgia, many of the, of the websites and online presence is, on the local, is in, in the local language. Um, but making your homework about what's going on in the country, which you would like to approach um, online, uh, reading more, understanding um, the, the local scene, understanding the customs, traditions, uh, what these people might, might look for um, is, also, um, is also very important. And also connecting with, with local networks of artists and, and musicians um, is, is, uh, is a must because through the um, networks of, of artists you can, uh, you can have access to a lot of interesting uh, people. Um, Isabel, personal contacts, meeting in person with possible partners is definitely an asset even 
even in the digital times. Absolutely, absolutely an asset, um, 100%. And again, many of the projects I've been doing is because um, um, I know a lot of people from many countries. So those of you who would like to uh, expand and are looking for a partner in, in, in a specific country, maybe by chance I would have a, I would have a good contact for you. So uh, don't hesitate to um, approach me. Thank you. I especially see the more need of um, really traveling uh, west, east, and then north, south, and not only vice versa, uh, because uh, people who work in, uh, in in more like I would say developed countries, although I don't like this separation, um, have a lot to share. But also vice versa, people who come from uh, from uh, Eastern Europe, Asia. Um, Caucasus, Central Asia, and other regions, Africa, uh, they also have a lot to share and to, to bring to our knowledge and our uh, experience their own, their own observations and their own, um, their own contacts. Um, and I find a lot of interesting, fascinating um, uh, cultural professionals as well as entrepreneurs um, in, many of, in many of those countries. Of course, it's a risk to travel. It's always a risk. Um, but the risk is always rewarded. Um, I usually have over... Um, a lot of flights a year, um, and I do a lot of volunteering work for many people um, because in culture we love what we do and it's more a passion um, and a lifestyle uh, rather than a profession. Uh, many people are asking me, um, what is your job? And I always say, um, I don't have a job. Um, I, um, I create jobs. I help others to create jobs. Um, I inspire others to do what they love doing. So I don't think it's a job. It's much more an inspiration and, um, and helping and empowering others to, um, to make it in their life is also something which, um, which empowers me and recharges me uh, back. So, um, so my, my, my travel is much more not for pleasure, not for business, but for, uh, for meeting great people around the world, meeting audiences and um, startup entrepreneurs and um, um, established uh, cultural organizations to um, try to find new strategies and new ways in the digital era. Uh, how they can survive. Yes, Ivan, the risk is something very important. And um, again, some, some researchers say that we are born with a um, different level of risk in our blood. Uh, but other researchers say um, you can train yourself to uh, take a risk, um, which um, is one of the traits of a very, very good entrepreneur, because living in uncertainty, taking risk, uh, not bold risk, but calculated risk, um, is a very important trait to be, to be an entrepreneur in any area, including also um, in the field of uh, music. Uh, there are people who prefer much more stable environments, much more regulated uh, environment where they're, they're told what to do, uh, they prefer a lifestyle from 9 to 5, um, although in the field of music is never ever um, uh, live from 9 to 5. It's, it's much more based on the muse, on the inspiration, um, which sometimes could be very exhausting, uh, but it's also very rewarding because you don't get just your, your check and, or your salary. Um, you have a lot of benefits from uh, the audiences, from the partners. Um, you have a lot of pleasure and, um, and a lot of inspiration. So this is, this is one of the reasons why uh, was when I graduated uh, a PhD in economics, I never, I never ever left uh, culture and arts. And with my knowledge in economics, um, I really try to, to make a bridge uh, between um, these two areas because I strongly believe that uh, creative people, especially in, in 21st century, with less and less support from the government, with some few exceptions in, in countries, um, have to know how to make it. They have to know how to how to survive and how to not only survive but love what they do, and uh, and uh, having a good financial uh, model to sustain themselves. Okay. Final final thing for any comment or question you might have. Otherwise, maybe we can uh, close this webinar. But again, we open a, a, a huge door for, for further collaboration. 
um, and I'm grateful for um, every uh, single one of you who, um, who spent time with me today, which is um, afternoon in Europe and uh, morning with me in uh, Montreal. Alicia, thank you. All right, so um, on behalf of uh, Cypress Center for the Research and Study of Music and um, all the organizers and uh, funders of this uh, great project, uh, many, many thanks uh, to everyone and um, we'll be in touch for sure. Again, please approach me uh, so that I know your emails. Um, um, if you can find the books in the library or you can invest buying it, please do so. I'm looking for your comments, suggestions for the next editions. Um, and um, also have a look at my online courses. Um, I'll be more than happy to uh, have you not only as audiences but also as somebody with whom we can um, we can share um, beautiful uh, further projects. So goodbye, everyone, um, and um, many thanks.